when the Christian movement began after the resurrection of Jesus, um, opposition to it continued. And at first, Christians left Jerusalem and its environs because there was persecution. And so um, those who left naturally took the message of the rising again of Jesus with them. But eventually, the church was organized enough um, to initiate uh, what we nowadays call world mission, so that they intentionally set apart people who went on their behalf uh, to take the message of Jesus to other parts. And very quickly, we find a great explosion, uh, a great expansion of the Christian faith uh, in many parts of the world. The church began as a tiny number of, of Jews, a dozen disciples and about a hundred other Jews who were followers of Jesus. But it quickly expanded into the non-Jewish world and quickly there were thousands of followers of Jesus from all over the Roman Empire. The earliest um, evidence we've got is of Christians meeting in places like Antioch um, and then um, through, in a sense, the work of the Apostle Paul uh, into southern Turkey, uh, and then through into uh, what's now Greece, northern Greece, Macedonia, um, all down to Athens and Corinth. There's a church in Rome, of course, even before Paul ever gets there or writes a letter to there. There are Christians who've, who've reached there. Um, we don't know where from. I mean, they're mentioned in the, the first day of Pentecost in, in um, the very first couple of chapters of the book of Acts. In the Acts of the Apostles, uh, a particular kind, a particular direction of this expansion is traced from Jerusalem to Rome. That is to say, going as it were from the margins of the empire, of the Roman Empire, to its very center. St. Paul and his companions and their missionary campaigns, I think we should call them, were instrumental uh, in some of this expansion, though not all because we know that the other apostles were also involved in it, because we find them uh, quite early on in far-flung places. However, the, the movement was not just from Jerusalem to Rome. The church was also expanding into Egypt. We already have the story of the conversion of the Ethiopian minister uh, in the Acts of the Apostles, and the church in Ethiopia is uh, very ancient, of course. The church spread into Roman North Africa and also into the Persian Empire, which was the other great superpower of that time. So we know that uh, quite as many Christians were martyred in the Persian Empire as were in the Roman. Initially, uh, at any rate, uh, much of the early church was urban. Uh, the Christian faith spread more easily in the cities where people were living cheek by jowl with one another, rubbing shoulders with each other. People from many different cultures and languages met in the port cities of the Roman Empire, for example, uh, in the trading posts of the ancient world. And um, the sizes of the churches varied from place to place, of course, but um, in the beginning, uh, we can imagine small groups of believers uh, able to meet uh, in the homes of other believers. Now, in Asia, uh, this generally happened in the upper room, which was a room that uh, ran the length of the whole house very often. Um, and um, we have accounts already in the New Testament of the church meeting in an upper room. Uh, but in Rome, for instance, where there were no such rooms, uh, quite often a whole house was donated by a wealthy believer to the church, uh, and in Rome we still have the names of the donors uh, who gave some of these early buildings, and so the walls were taken down uh, and the whole building was turned into a large room sufficient for people to worship. The early church um, in the f first part of the first century when it was really getting going, say around 50 AD and things like that, um, the early church would have met in people's homes. Um, We've got plenty of evidence for that from, from Paul's letters and other parts as well. So somebody with a, a larger home would host a gathering of people, probably to share um, uh, food and a sort of 
you know, uh, remembering of a, of, a, of a Last Supper, uh, and certainly to sing um, praises to God and praises to Jesus Christ as well, and to to learn and hear and reflect on uh, what Jesus had said and done. In the early church, Christians met in uh, houses. There weren't church buildings, but uh, people met in the uh, houses of uh, rich Christians. And they would pray together, they would sing, they would uh, study the Old Testament scriptures. That was their written source. But they'd also study the uh, oral teachings of Jesus delivered to them from the apostles. Uh, the earliest uh, church building as such that we know of in Dura Europos, which is in modern Iraq, I think, um, is such a house where uh, someone has clearly donated their own home and the believers have turned it into a church along with a baptistry. But later, probably about, only, probably about 100 years after Jesus, uh, perhaps even later, they had purpose-built church buildings and uh, we have the first evidence of this around 200 AD of actual buildings built for church meetings. Well, at the very beginning, it was, it was clear uh, from the earliest Christian records that we have that the apostles were involved in teaching. And they would be using primarily uh, two sources, the Old Testament, the collection of Jewish scriptures which were available to them at the time, and the teaching of Jesus. And the earliest Christian teachers combined these two sources, the Old Testament and the teachings of Jesus, and developed those uh, in order to instruct the first Christians. Our earliest records of Christianity talk about four things on which uh, the Christian worship, the Christian services at the beginning were based. They talked about the teaching of the apostles, uh, prayers, and the breaking of bread, that's eating together, uh, communally and also sharing possessions and so those are the four sort of cornerstones of the uh, earliest Christian worship services uh, and uh, later on things became more de more developed the breaking of bread became more developed into uh, a Christian Eucharist uh, and other th changes took place later on but those are the four which were prominent at the beginning.